I'm Candy Evans, and this is Dallas Dirt. Today, we have probably one of my most exciting guests ever. I'm so excited. This man is so plugged into Dallas. If you want to know about anything that's happening in the city, you talk to Dallas Cothram. Thank, Thank you. you. Well, thanks for having me. Thank you for coming. I I'll, appreciate it. I'll try to underperform. <laughs> You will overperform. All right, we'll He's see. the president of Master Plan, which is the land use consultation firm that is the primary land consultation firm in Dallas. I may say that if you want to get something approved in front of city council, you go to Master Plan, correct? Thank you. We like to think so. I mean, yes. we've been in business since 1981. and. Yes. We've won a lot of cases. We've lost some too, uh, but you know that's part of the process. And you know? the company was started by your father. Yep, my dad served on the Dallas Council from '65 to '80, and you know those were councils that had the foresight to build DFW Airport yes. and all the lakes that provided for not just Dallas's growth, but all the suburban ones from Dallas, you know, uh, water utilities. So, what are some of the biggest projects that you think that Master Plan has undertaken? Oh, uh, probably our most popular projects, Katie Trail Ice House. I mean, in it might be at the top of my list too, but you know, we handled President Bush's relocation. That was a real honor. Mm -hmm. uh, Rosewood Court, mm -hmm. uh, the mm -hmm. Hunt Building was a good one. Victory, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know, Javier's, Texas Motor Speedway. I mean, I mean, I, I feel like we have a good uh, brag list, Presbyterian Hospital. Oh, I mean, did you, you know, thank you. That was great. I mean, great. We've, yeah. we've done... We've done a lot of work and I take great pride, you know, that I can get in the car with my kids and say, you know, I did this one or Carl Crawley did that or my dad did this one is you go up and down the tollway and you go up and down Central or Preston or whatever it is. There's a good chance that we've worked on things and, you know, I'm working on things now to redevelop that my dad developed in the 80s. And and before that, you know, my grandfather built the first mall in Dallas. Really? Uh, Lockwood Mall in, I uh, guess, the 50s and so you know he started in the 30s so we're closing in on 100 years in dallas real estate so unbelievable um, we are going to do a story on that oh okay good yes yeah. that's an excellent story it is yes, 100 years in dallas real estate you know we've been doing this for a long time and successfully and you've done such a good job because you mentioned that before and i'll just go back to that we owe those people so much for the incredible planning. I mean, DFW is genius. Totally agree. I, every time I go to the airport, I'm I just so or it's well organized yes, and well I can, laid I, out. I, you know, I can remember you know, my, as a kid, it was fun. You know, mm -hmm. it be, you know be, having your dad on the council. Like I got to shoot baskets on top of Reunion or Re Reunion Tower when it was a. Um, uh, construction site, and I rode the elephant in the parade. Uh, I got to go in the Globetrotters locker room. So I got to do all these things that you know most kids in the 70s certainly weren't doing. I got yeah. to go up in the blimp one time. You got in the blimp before oh the God. Cowboys game, but yes. at the cap before the Cowboys game. So you know, um, but it, those were great decisions, and, mm -hmm. and we did a behind, you know we went out to look at uh, DFW many times as a kid when it was under construction, and so. Um, you know, they importantly they also bought enough land. Right now, they also then bought a bunch of land that has natural gas on it. So, yeah. and now DFW is not just for, you know, passengers. It's a huge cargo hub. Right. Uh, you know, it, it, there's all kinds of um, industrial around it. If you fly in and out of DFW, next time look at how many warehouse buildings are around that. Now, why the city of Dallas has decided they don't want to do warehouses. It's baffling to me, but we maybe talk about that. Dallas makes a lot of decisions oh that I don't gosh. think are, are, are very good for the market. Well, and that reminds me of something that we need to talk about because you were like you were right front row seat to that, not even a front row seat. You represented the client of Trinity East and that crazy time when we signed this 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 lease for uh, natural gas drilling that knowing full well we couldn't do it and now we just had to pay 55 million dollars well, not only pay for it but we have to borrow the money hey, i mean yeah i was front row for that and represented trinity east you, know, you got to go back to the great recession and you know the city was really in peril had you know a really hard time seeing how they'd find a way to move forward with their budget so they decided they would lease henley hensley field xto and then the hensley field being in 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 the you know over near grand prairie that okay. part of dallas mm -hmm. and then the, the the part by the trinity river to trinity east and so you know um trinity east paid them nearly 20 million dollars in xto i think more than that and as i recall and so you know the city gave them you know took their money and spent it immediately because they had this huge hole in the budget 
and promised them that they would be able to drill for gas because that's what they'd get. And importantly, the city was going to get part of the minerals. So they were going to not just get the money up front. They were going to get money on the back end when that gas started producing. In other words, they would get a check every month. That's right. And and that didn't happen because they didn't get to drill. But, you know, you have to think about the dire straits that the city was in at the time when they made this deal. But they did make the deal and they did take the money. Um, and and like Ricky Callahan, who was a council member, said, it's just wrong. Um, you know, we took their money. Now, I don't think he thought they stole it, but it's you know, Dallas is a business, and I believe people have to be able to trust who they're dealing with. Right. And it, it's, I think this was a seminal event where, um, and people all look back on it and say, this is, you know, causes businesses and people to distrust. Can I trust the city right. to do business? They took my $20 million and they knew what business I was in, and then they did not give me the appropriate zoning to do it. And so I think I do kind of look at things maybe differently. Mm -hmm. And I really realized that that gas drilling thing, even as it was going on, I've handled hundreds of zoning cases. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you can go back and, I, and I, I've dealt, I, I had already by that point done 50 drill sites or more in Tarrant County and Parker mm -hmm. County and other places. So I knew well that, pun intended, that, <laughs> um, you know, a lot of the opposition for that was going to be from people that don't live in Dallas. Mm -hmm. um, and they are just opposed to it. Well, in other cities, they didn't listen to them. They made decisions that were rational and they thought, okay, mineral owners want to win make money on this. The city can profit for this. And now there's 1,900 gas wells in the city of Fort Worth and they've made millions of dollars. So That's you where know, they get those gorgeous stoplights from. That's right. And mm -hmm. and their streets are paved. Mm -hmm. And, you know, every year I think about five hundred million dollars goes in from natural gas goes in taxes just to municipalities in North Texas. Well, you know, Dallas doesn't work that way. And and Dallas practices the city of Dallas practices a lot of national politics at the municipal mm -hmm. level. Yeah. And it's super problematic because, you know, for my municipal services I, and taxes, I want to have clean water mm -hmm. and good streets and absolutely. I want it to be safe. OK, I, absolutely. and and the parks and, and those right. things. But Dallas is really busy chasing these these things that are national policy right. issues that they can't control anyhow. Right. And it's a sad thing, but it also is the beginning of where I think that uh, the, it, it, a precipitous fall in that Dallas cares a lot more about politics than it does business. Exactly. And I don't feel like citizens are quite worked up enough about this. That well, they don't pay attention. They don't. And yeah. but then they wonder why, you know, right. I, yeah. I, I think yeah. living in Dallas at this point. Um, yeah. And this is why I'm surprised the city manager has, has survived as long as he has, is yeah. that, you know, in, Dallas has some of the highest taxes in the region right. and arguably the lowest deliver, delivery, delivery services. Service. So mm -hmm. I just think all the time, and I don't live in Dallas, though I do choose to have my business in Dallas, mm -hmm. but um, uh, I'm renting there. I wouldn't own. And I, I just, I wonder why more people aren't living, leaving, and but they are. So yeah. in this great period of prosperity, We've lost. It, during the last census period, we somehow lost 100,000 people. And I don't know how that can happen in, mm -hmm. in, in a boom time. And we're not losing them to Cincinnati or San Diego, really. No. We're losing them to McKinney and Frisco, Frisco and Cedar Hill Lucas. and Lucas and mm -hmm. very predictably. Mm -hmm. And... Right. Um, I think they better start seeing on Marilla that um, they have to make a real change uh, and, and keep those people. I think some city leaders who are not elected are getting involved and trying to say we need to make some changes. Otherwise, Dallas, which I think is a beautiful really wonderful city that has so much potential but you're absolutely right there's been mismanagement and the city the city council the way our government works is really like a board of directors and their job is to kind of watch over what the manager is doing and approve it or not approve it and they should know business but they don't well and you know it's largely practiced now on 
you know, fourteen one. I've made the joke, and I think I've said this in my morning news columns that fourteen one is fourteen mayors and one guy that runs the meeting. Yeah. And and we now have ward politics for sure. And right. when it comes to zoning, it's really a vote of one, and mm -hmm. no person really should exert that much authority. Mm -hmm. And you know, if you go along with what I want, I'll go along with what mm -hmm. you want. Well, that doesn't work as well because people aren't minding the entire store. Mm -hmm. And meanwhile, the departments don't behave better. The you know the you know they they're all they're all siloed. Oh, I don't not, I'm not concerned about what public right. works is doing, and I don't care about what sustainable and they development should is doing. Be. They should they, all work they're, together. They're on a team. Business is a team it's sport. It's a team sport. Absolutely. A car doesn't run with just one little right. part of it. It has to be the whole and, you engine. Know, I mean, big cities have a lot of resources and Dallas can pull out of this and I hope it does. You know, when your name's Dallas, you, you yes. know, you kind of root for the city. And, you. you know, we've been downtown since mm -hmm. 1983 and I, you know, I, I think we'll stay, uh, you know, when our lease is up. I mean, I, I like being downtown and I think the city can pull out of this, but it is going to absolutely take leadership. And mm -hmm. part of leadership is, um, sometimes telling citizens that they're not right or mm -hmm. explaining them or educating them on why they, you know, may be wrong on mm -hmm. this. Exactly. Well, so very interestingly, after I ran for city council my last time, I call it two and a half times, the, the second and a half time, um, someone called me about the development at Preston um, and Beltline. You're the one. No, Preston Beltline. No, no, Preston, the oh. uh, the sign mark. Oh, yeah. Sign oh, yeah. Yeah, that, yeah, you, yeah, yeah. The Henry S. Miller. Henry yeah, S. sure. Miller, Pepper exactly. Square. Yeah, the okay. one that Lee Kleinman yeah, is working yeah, on. Yeah, who's Pepper the former Square. city councilman, which I'll talk about that later. But anyhow, so they called me and they said, oh, my God, what are we going to do about that? And I said, well, did, did you vote in the election? They go, what election? I said, there was just an election <laughs> two months ago. Oh, I've been out of the state. That's the problem. Nobody pays attention. And then when they do pay attention, it's too late. But I've been to those meetings. I know that folks are very upset about that. How do you integrate multifamily living gently, easily into a neighborhood where there is our single family homes? Because that is the bedrock of this city well, is it, our single it, family homes. It, it is. You know, there's and, and, I, and I say this often because I guess I think it's funny. Uh, there are two people th the two things people don't like. Mm -hmm. They don't like change, and they don't like the way things are. Right. And it's real Human hard nature. in 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 what mm -hmm. I do because we're in the nature of change. That shopping center has outlived its usefulness, mm -hmm. and there's exactly. no chance. Um, and and like a lot of neighborhoods in in you know almost anywhere, but particularly in Dallas, they're populated by people that are older. Mm -hmm. And you know, next year I'm out of the prime work age. So I'll be 55. And so, but I'm already out of the prime shopper age. You know, I go to any community meeting. It's not just this one. You go to almost any community meeting and, and you get all these people that have opinions mm -hmm. that retailers aren't interested in. <laughs> you know, retailers are geared towards. What is that saying? You know, Opinions are like, no, we want. Yeah, <laughs> say, you know, re retailers are interested in people sixteen to thirty-five right, or right. women slightly older than that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you know, you know, and and that's kind of an example of the neighborhood. They they give you a lot of opinions, but. They're not really experts on these things. Nor are and they financing it. That's a, that's absolutely right. And so, um, you know, the other thing is, is that multifamily will ease that tax burden on people. I mean, it pays a disproportionate amount of property tax. And so, uh, you know, if you look at these deals, each apartment, I could show you a, a statistical breakdown, about 20% of people's income is discretionary. And, you know, good cities can capture... 10 or more percent of that. So, you know, if you have somebody paying $2 rents or more like they would out there and it's two people, you probably have 175 to 200 and some thousand dollars of combined income. Okay. Well, and you recapture 15% of that or 12% or something because uh, they go out more, they buy more drinks, they buy more things, they donate to their church or whatever it is they're doing. That goes a long way. That door value on those apartments is going to equal a lot of the houses. And so really we need to get people and, and, and it's funny because you go down to PD 193 in Oaklawn and people oh, are not. Where is that kind of Oaklawn area? Okay. Yeah, in Oaklawn, people are not dismissive or discriminate no. against renters no. because they know lots of people that used to own a big house and now they're renting. And they're doing it by choice. Mm -hmm. And I have people in my company that do that. They mm -hmm. owned a big house in Lakewood or wherever it is. And now they've moved into uptown because they wanted to sell that 
invest the money, and then they're in a nice high rise where everything is done for them. They can travel and do these kind of things. So people are worried about things that they don't need to really worry about. And and really nice multifamily. Look at uh, Leon Backus's deal at Walnut Hill and Beautiful. 75. Mm -hmm. It's full of people over 60 in those apartments. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, or look at the deal Streetlights did across from Javier's. Oh, yeah. Its average age is mid-60s. It's and almost that is a retirement a gorgeous place. Building. But, and gorgeous. That, that's what will happen. So right. people in, and, you know, this kind of dovetails into what I wrote about this week in the morning news is that, you know, I absolutely think that the city's current plan for this this allowing duplexes or duplexes right. and triplexes and so on rezone, in single family neighborhoods mm -hmm. is terrible. Okay. And you know, it's changing the rules in the middle of the game. Right, exactly. But neighbors have to if the neighbors want that protection, they have to give up that on the perimeters of their neighborhoods it has to be more dense, mm -hmm. it has to have more uh, more options. I mean, nor, you know, I can remember as a kid, you know, uh, I remember when Sackowitz Village got done in mm -hmm. the 70s and what a huge deal it was for Dallas. And that was the edge of the world. Right. And, you know, now that shopping center has been redone. But North Dallas was the place, really the place in the state. And now that place is called West Plano and Frisco. Right. And North Dallas has been assaulted and all that has moved further on. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of people have stayed and you see the same angst going on in Plano. Mm -hmm. You've get people whose kids are out of school, they are aging in place, and they want Plano to continue to be what it was when their kids graduated high high school in the 90s. And I just see this happen because, you know, you probably from, our yeah. firm is yeah. working at any time between our Fort Worth, Frisco, and Dallas offices. We're working in 80 different jurisdictions across the Metroplex, right. at least 60. So you're seeing these almost psychological similarities. Absolutely. And, and they yeah. break down into different, different mm -hmm. kind of psychologies, but you get a lot of people who get stuck in kind of when their kids leave the nest mm -hmm. and they don't see how much the world is changing around them and they're fearful of it. But, mm -hmm. you know, you know, uh, if that shopping center doesn't redevelop, it's not going to be retail. Uh, it's not going to be office. I mean, there's no wow. hope for office. Right. So, um, and Dallas needs more. We lost a hundred thousand residents. I mean, you, you know, and, and, and I know cause I do this for a living, you know, where all these projects should be somewhere else. It's always, oh, oh, well, I love your project, but it needs to be over there. Well, that the people over there are saying it needs to be here. Right. It, it, we just can't keep making those decisions or we're going to end up being Detroit. Right. And um, it, it, and people need it, that, you know, it's it's not going to be more traffic. Or if it is. Okay, but I think that is a legitimate concern. Well, it is, traffic, except that, that this. is a mess. Well, but this is the fourth largest you know, metropolitan area in the country. Okay. You know, when I travel to our now national offices in Chicago or mm -hmm. or um, uh, New York or L.A., we're in all those places. When I go there, I don't expect that it's going to be Kilgore, Texas. You know, I mean, I know it's going to be busy. I know it's going to be expensive. And I know it, you know, people, Dallas has been expensive for about 15 years. Mm -hmm. People are just all of a sudden noticing it. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm not saying that's not a thing. And sure, there's some traffic, but some of that traffic is good because you're catching sales tax for people who live other places. Mm -hmm. And if there were more there in that little micro area, people wouldn't have to travel as far. So, um, you know, uh, that site needs a lot of help. We've oh, worked absolutely. really hard to come up with not, we're really, in, we're asking for less zoning in terms of trips. Mm -hmm. Retail mm -hmm. creates a lot more trips, trips right. than apartments do. Right. And apartments spread across all the day and it's about eight and a half trips per uh, day. The difference is people don't know those folks mm -hmm. and or they distrust them. But in a lot of times, they're your friend's children mm -hmm. that are living there. And we've almost- Or teachers. Every, right, or teachers. Yes, yes. Almost everybody I know lived in an apartment at one time. Oh, and yes. you know, when I, you know, I lived in an apartment as an undergraduate in graduate school. And then when I got my first job teaching at UT Tyler, I also lived in an apartment. Mm -hmm. I don't think I was a menace to East Texas, you know, when I was living in an, East, in, in an apartment. Right. I mean, uh, and, you know, these young professionals are not, they got their own lives and they're really busy. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's just, you know, you look around at the multifamily that's getting done and it's not causing problems. And it's beautiful. It, it, it is. And people are just scared of change. Yeah. 
But they ought to be more scared of not change. Well, we are going to stop now. I don't want to stop. I want you to come back and we'll talk because we have so much to talk about. This is so important to the growth of our city and to our real estate because that's what it's all about. Well, I, you know, I, I, you know, I look at your blog frequently because I think y'all are looking We're at... We're a website now. Let me correct uh, you. Sorry. That's okay. I, no. I, I apologize. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and, and, but y'all are looking at the where people are going. People right. that buy right. homes exactly. are buying for their future. Right. They're not buying for the, fa- for the past. Mm-hmm. And they're buying in a neighborhood, not just their home, but they've got to be open to kind of that whole ecosystem mm-hmm. of that neighborhood. Right. And a lot of that comes, you want, you know, you want a good grocery store yes. and you want a good sit down dining. Yes. That means you need a lot of people with disposable income. Right. And that means younger professional people, people over 60 are bad shoppers mm-hmm. and bad spenders. They don't eat out enough. And that's not just being mean. It's, it's a fact. It's, it's just a fact. It's, a fact. it's statistics. Yes. And that's what I try to look at in what I do for for work and what I do for my morning news columns is I just look at facts and human behavior. And what people are wanting is often at odds with the way they're behaving. And, you know, that's why we have a joke that, you know, we invite property owners and people show up at meetings. Um, and it's a disappointment. So well, thank you for having me. It's always a pleasure. Thank you yeah, for coming. Absolutely. And yeah. we'll can, this is to I'll, be continued. To be continued. Great. I'm happy to come. Thank, thank you, you, Dallas. And thank you for joining us today on Dallas Dirt. Can you hardly wait to the next one? I can't. Thanks.